Nice to meet you. Last year, this time, they were seeing. There's another one of those Washington Institute. Yeah, Shelby and Al. We're setting them all to Suzanne's house. <laughs> We have a lot of people throwing out ideas, and it just generally we're trying to keep it under an hour and trying to make it move smoothly. The whole pirates and the Somalia thing, and they're expanding. It's just well, it took a giant tank. Well, it's three football fields or three aircraft carriers long. There were no obvious stories today. It wasn't like there was a major story, and so you knew you had to have, you know, one or two people on this story. In Connecticut Avenue, where they've had two fatalities within six months' time. We're in the middle of Swiss right now, which is, you know, our biggest four weeks where we get three months out of the year, we get judged um, by uh, how we do, and that's what we call sweeps. So it's, um, we have a lot of reporters pitching stories, and, uh, and then decide what we do, and then, then we start the day. You basically have to have, you know, two phones up to your ears, listening to scanners, listening to people. The running joke is that sometimes I do have ADHD because a little shiny object in front of me and I can get distracted. I've walked away from reporters before as they're talking just because something else has come up, but not because I want to, it's just that we've got constantly a million things going on. I think it may, all the technology tools make it easier, yeah. in my opinion. Because yeah. if I can't get the reporter on the phone, I'll just shoot her an email saying, hey, get call me when you get a second, or could you get this, or did you get this? So, yeah, I don't have to And it makes it easier call. for them. If they're in the middle of an interview, they don't have to answer their phone, they can just look down at what we just emailed them and then just email back. I, mean, I think that we're constantly, even while we're in the meeting, we're getting email updates from people or um, tips or sources or whatever. Um, and I think that it's, you've seen how perhaps years ago the meeting would have had everyone in one room. These days people are blackberrying in their ideas or they're calling in from whatever region they're in so they don't have to travel to D.C. only to go back to, you know, Annapolis or wherever it may be. So I think that in, in that respect, I think it's been a big help. And I think all of us have the ability to multitask, to listen to the meeting, or hopefully you have the ability, if you're on your BlackBerry doing, you know, ancillary work, you're also able to stay in focus to some extent to what's going on in the meeting. So you're, uh, when it's your turn to come around and pitch stories, you're not pitching stories that have already been pitched. What always makes for a good pitch is when you get the real people in there, the emotions, the how someone's life is going to change. Without a person, without a human connection to the story, uh, the viewers are less interested. There are great stories that are meant for newspapers, and there's good stories that are meant for television, all based on the quality of the video. There's certain things when you start getting into graphics and statistics, it starts losing it on the viewer, you know. So it's got to be a good video-driven story. Sometimes, unfortunately, it depends who pitches it. I mean, <laughs> you just know that a particular reporter can turn, is, is just, is, can turn magic and they're just excellent and even if they just have a germ of an idea you know they'll be able to go out and execute it really well. Pretty much in the, in the morning meeting any story can get thrown out and in the end we, all, you know, we decide the 10 to 14 stories that we'll do for the day. I know that uh, Andrew mentioned it but the Hillary stuff like Drudge is calling it now. A lot of people are saying that this is happening but um, I think it's still just a lot of speculation so far but could be interesting to do that since we didn't do it yesterday. I did an interview with Hillary Clinton uh, maybe three days before Election Day, the Sunday night before the election, and I asked her about a future in an Obama administration or will she stay in the Senate, whatever it may be. Uh, I'm very much looking forward to being uh, an active senator on behalf of uh, the agenda that President Obama puts forth. This much so, people are not jaded, you know, she says there at the end, hey, I'm looking forward to doing whatever I can as a senator for a Barack Obama administration. And because we held on to that today, when we do a story about whether or not she's going to be the next Secretary of State, we can say Hillary Clinton told us she wants to remain in the Senate, um, whether or not that's true. <laughs> As Obama gets closer to naming his cabinet, talk of a Secretary of State Hillary Clinton grows stronger. Scott Thuman joins us with the latest. Scott? Well, Gordon, it is getting a lot of traction right now. But